people have always thought of different ways of protesting, from boycotts and sit-ins to the more unusual glitter bombs and banging of pots and pans. With these unconventional methods of protest acting as a way to grab public attention in a visually striking but non-violent method. But unconventional or strange protests are nothing new and the early 20th century saw one of the strangest yet most forgotten of these, the 1920 Denham Overalls protests. The story begins after the end of the First World War. Like nearly all wars, the demobilization of the economy and the return of soldiers caused hardships. With armament factories closing and soldiers unable to find work, and farms geared towards wartime production unable to sell surplus goods. As a result, the unemployment rate grew to about 12%. Yet despite this, the price of many goods grew, as consumer industries could not quickly switch to peacetime demands, so inflation was very high, at 14.5% to the end of 1919. These price increases affected a variety of household goods, but with many textile mills geared towards war production, the most pressing example was clothing and so people would look for a way to protest that would highlight both the rising cost of living and show solidarity between different classes, and if it also saved them money in the process, all the better. Rather than forego clothing altogether, many people opted to switch from their normal clothes to cheap denim overalls. Women also joined in on the movement, and in the year that women got the right to vote and more women in the workplace, this was yet another example of the loosening of some gender roles, although some women wore gingham dresses instead of full overalls. And soon, so-called overall clubs popped up around the nation, especially in the South, with 5,000 members in Birmingham, Alabama, 2,000 in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and 1,500 in Richmond, Virginia, to name a few. It soon became something of a craze. Think of it as the Coney 2012 of its day, Priests in Boston would preach in overalls. Students in Missouri would attend class in overalls too, with any student who refused being thrown into the school swimming pool. Even politicians got in on the action, with the mayor of Emporia, Kansas, even wearing overalls for his inauguration. And one member of Congress wore overalls on the Congress floor. Of course, like many trends today, there were times where people tried to get in on the trend for their own advantage, only to have it backfire, with some people wearing overall accessories over normal suits. Notable Democratic presidential candidate William McAdoo pitifully had patches of overall sewn into his otherwise normal suit. He would go on to lose the nomination. Whilst humorously, a janitor at a bank in Hannibal, Missouri was cheered by crowds who saw him at work as they thought he was a banker sympathetic to their cause. Eventually, however, the movement encountered an inevitable problem that was obvious to many people even at the time. As more and more people bought denim, either to protest the rising prices or get in on the craze, the price of overalls more than doubled, increasing from $3 a pair to $8 a pair. The movement itself, beyond the aesthetic, probably didn't have much impact. The sitting Democratic Party would have been unlikely to win re-election in 1920 anyways, although clothing prices did start to drop and by 1922, the recession was over and inflation fell, with the Roaring Twenties on their way to starting in earnest. Of course, farmers, particularly in the South, were still on hard times and didn't benefit much from this. But the overall clubs and protests remain an interesting piece of forgotten history and culture of a bygone age and prove that novel forms of protest are nothing new and just like today, they can quickly go from promoting a cause to becoming something of a popular fad.